Hello and welcome to this ICAW webinar, an introduction to app stacks and automation in association with our partner AutoEntry. My name is Roz Harrington, I'm the Senior Practice Manager here at the ICAW and I'll be facilitating today's session. We very much encourage you to get involved with the webinar today. You can submit your questions to us anytime in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We've kept some time at the end to take those questions for you. Closed captioning is also enabled on the webinar. To turn this feature on, just click on the CC icon on your screen. Please note that these are automatically generated, so the occasional error does occur. A link to the slides and some other useful resources will appear in the chat box shortly. You'll also receive a copy of this recording and the slides used in a follow-up email after the event. Our speaker today is Megan Ledden, Customer Services Manager at AutoEntry, with a focus on creating efficiencies and improving processes using technology to meet the needs of your practice and those of your clients. Hi, Megan. Um, hi there, Roz. Thanks for the introduction. Um, perfect. So I'll be um, basically hosting the webinar today. As Roz said, it's an introduction to AppStacks with automation and with auto entry. Um, so. Um, so sorry, we're going to start off with a quick poll. Um, so Lana, if you could. Um, start that poll that would be great so please just click now to tell us if you use a cloud-based accounting software or if you use a desktop-based accounting um, software and then we'll come back to the results in just a second so you all know Roz but who am I um, so I'm one of auto entries product specialists um, and have been for several years now what really matters to me is helping accountants and bookkeepers create efficiencies and improve um, their processes. At the end of the day, that's what auto entry is all about. Um, so one of our former managers used to say, that's what gets us out of bed in the morning. Um, and it's so true. Um, every day I speak to accountants and bookkeepers in practice, just to help them understand how technology can help, not just them, of course, but also their clients. Um, in fact, it's something of a long term arrangement because it's important for me to ensure customers are happy as they roll out auto entry within their business. Um, so, Lana, if you can show us the results of the first poll, please. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, so it seems that most people do use a cloud based accounting software. Um, so I think it shows how the industry has actually progressed in terms of technology uptake. Um, although you could also argue that it's just impossible to avoid cloud accounting solutions in our modern world. It's great to see so many people already realizing the benefits of cloud accounting, because as we'll explain in a moment, this is vital when it comes to building an app stack. Um, it's the only way that the data can easily and seamlessly flow from one destination to another. Um, incidentally, we've nothing against Microsoft Excel in this webinar. A well-crafted spreadsheet can be a work of art. It's just not the solution for everything. So where are we up to with the cloud in mid-2023? Um, so in terms of using the cloud, there's little doubt that the cloud is here to stay. It's just the first choice for businesses of all kinds. This um, includes accountants, of course, but also your clients. So Google research says only a quarter of business, businesses now stay with on-prem software, which is software that doesn't have a cloud connectivity. Um, there's lots of reasons for this cloud uptake. Um, research suggests executives like the flexibility provided and they avoid being locked into a single vendor. Um, it can also help with things like ESG goals by providing easier and more effective measurements of carbon impact. Um, and then we have desktop apps. So you might have missed it, but talking about Microsoft Office or MS Office, as we have for decades, is now out of date. Um, so it's now known as Office 365, and it, along with all your Office files, are all avail available online in apps and via desktop apps. You can technically still buy Microsoft Office, but Microsoft really only offers that as a concession. They're really pushing people to move into the cloud. 20% um, of all businesses use Google Docs, um, and this exists, exists solely in the cloud. Um, and this will probably increase because so many schools and colleges depend on it. And as those people graduate, they're going to want to use tools that they're familiar with. Um, and then cloud also powers amazing AI. 
Um, so astonishing new artificial intelligence technology like ChatGPT and MidJourney are simply impossible without the cloud. It's the only way to access the massive data models that they need to function. Um, the cloud also provides the data to create them. And this is why Twitter recently stopped unregistered people viewing tweets. And these data models won't even fit on the average PC and the huge computational power required to make them work can only be delivered by the cloud. Um, we're already starting to see these incredible AI services coming to accounting tools and the coming year or two will be really interesting. Um, and then we have security as a service. So IT administrators have gone from worrying about security in the cloud maybe a decade ago to realizing it can actually empower very tight security policies. And um, it turns out it's the perfect way to enforce security policies and also ensure workers have the most up-to-date security tools and resources immediately once they're available. It provides a perfect eagle eye view of all a company's resources and which enables a very fast response to security events. Um, so what exactly is an app stack? Um, if you speak to any successful accountant, they'll have a personalized app stack that they've researched and implemented, which now drives their business forward. Um, so it's also known within the accounting profession as a tech stack or integrations or sometimes practice platforms. Um, so they're cloud-based, so that data flows effortlessly between apps and services safely and securely. And this means you can connect the apps together, which is really where the power lies. And um, they're automated, so automation drives app stack creation. All the Zero 2022 app award winners automate tasks. Basically, if you're a software developer who wants to create an app from scratch today, you just have to look for things that need automating. Um, both accountants, bookkeepers and clients um, can have app stacks, but often the power comes when you integrate your apps with those of your clients and advising on app stacks as well. Um, so they're often mobile first, so this means they're flexible, they work across many devices and um, in any location and they're available 24 seven too. Um, and apps can target any area you work in. So compliance, bookkeeping, payroll, reporting, auditing, funding. Um, savvy accountants and bookkeepers also expand their app stacks into areas like marketing. Um, app stores are treasure troves to be raided and are how people typically build their basic app stack. You can pick and mix from different software vendors. And of course, it's all ledger agnostic. Our example here mentioned Zero, but that could be QuickBooks or Sage or FreshBooks. Um, lastly, it is important to understand that although we say app stack, we are sometimes referring to online services for which there might not be an actual app. These are still in the cloud and they can still integrate into app stacks. A good example is one we'll discuss in a moment when I run through a demo of an app stack which is used for funding applications. Um, so why should you use an app stack? So it offers connectivity with clients. So this means you can move your data instantly and seamlessly between yourself and clients. Um, for example, just a year or two ago, many accountants were asked to create COVID funding applications for clients to get government assistance. The cloud made getting this data and creating reports from it incredibly easy. Um, otherwise, it was a case of emailing the data or even worse, posting around printed copies. Um, it introduces efficiencies into core processes. So we're not introducing technology for technology's sake. As I've already mentioned, all of the top apps are built around some kind of automation and they take away the drudge tasks that most of us hate doing. Um, and this is a useful side effect when it comes to recruitment too, because it's no longer a case of dropping all that work on junior employees who therefore become dissatisfied. Instead, they can join your business and become more productive, useful and valued, particularly useful during the current hiring crisis in our industry. And they also free up time for work that better uses your experience. So as I just mentioned, without those drudge tasks, everything from inputting data from receipts to chasing late payments, and you're free to take up more of an advisory role with clients. This can radically alter your service offering propositions so you can get closer to clients, be of better use, and then increase fees based on usefulness, all without the client becoming concerned about the fees that they're paying. 
And if you want to aim for growth, if you want to free up time for training, or perhaps if you just want to get a better work-life balance so that the dog gets more walks or you can play with your cat, um, AppStex can help free up that time. And then there's collateral benefits. So you present as digital first. This is just vital for the new generations that are starting businesses. And um, for example, did you know that the oldest member of Gen Z and um, that we all think of as kids, um, they're now 26 years old. And um, the oldest member of the millennial generation is 42. So these people were brought up on technology. Research shows that members of the Gen Z generation got their first smartphone before their 12th birthday. Um, and these people are starting businesses and you need to match their expectations by being digital first. So where can you get an app stack? So it sounds like a bit of a silly question, um, but like, where do you get new apps? Where, where do apps live? Um, and for some, this is obvious, but not necessarily for everybody. So app stores and marketplaces for cloud accounting software, so Xero, Sage, um, are the most popular. It's probably true to say that most large accounting apps have some kind of app store. And the beauty is that these are built around the seamless sharing of data. Although this isn't guaranteed and you should always check. There's also the mobile and app stores um, that many of us will already be familiar with. So there's the Apple Store, the Google Play Store, and most cloud services come with the mobile app of some kind. And you should find their apps there and um, because that's the only place they can be. Um, Apple actually don't allow you to install apps unless it's through their app store. And then there are those built into operating systems like the Windows Store or the Windows Marketplace. This is a bit more like um, the mobile app stores, except just on Windows. Um, and Apple has their app store on Macs nowadays as well. Um, now, other than that, you can also just Google where to download and install apps. Um, cloud apps and services are usually offered through websites and often you can sign up there as well. Um, and good advice is just to check reviews alongside each app. So before you download it, check the third party review sites. Um, the good ones are like Captera and Trustpilot. And then just ask around and see what other people are using. So attend meetings, talk to colleagues, look for personal recommendations from people doing the same kind of work you do. Speak to clients who seem tech savvy to get pointers. Um, and don't just ask what they're using, but how they use it. This is vital and um, because it provides a short shortcut into the most efficient way to get the best out of the software. Ask what they need, um, ask what need they had and um, how that need was solved. And um, again, from both the perspective of their work and how it benefited clients. Um, and I'd also suggest demoing an app on your own accounting. So see how the app can help with your own business before you consider rolling it out to clients. So we're going to take a look at a typical app stack. Um, this is one you might use for a retail client. So we're, we'll start with something that's hopefully familiar. We have zero accounting. Um, and with what we're talking about, accounting apps are the foundation of our app stack. And now it doesn't have to be zero. It could be Sage, QuickBooks, Free Agent, basically any of the top accounting softwares. Um, app stacks are ledger agnostic. Um, this means you can like mix and match software vendors. And this is an amazing factor when considering building an app stack. So with zero, we're going to add in auto entry, which is in the zero app store and everything plums through seamlessly. So auto entry basically pushes data into zero. So this data could be from receipts, bills, invoices, bank statements, and um, from PDFs, people, your clients are emailing you. Um, or you can also set auto entry up to fetch those documents from online um, sources. Um, and next, we're going to add in Lightspeed. Um, and this is a retail management and electronic point of sale system or POS system. And remember, all of this is in the cloud and within the same ecosystem. So all the data is going to flow through automatically. Um, again, the app pushes data into zero. And because of this, we're going to get rapid visibility into things like products, purchase and sales data. There's no need to use USB sticks, no need to export Excel spreadsheets. And in this age of MTD and digital linking rules, that's not a bad thing. Remember that the data has to have a fully digital journey. So copying and pasting, not allowed. Um, and now let's look at something a little bit more complicated. I mentioned earlier that auto entry also integrates with Sage accounting. So we're going to swap out zero for Sage. And here we can see this time that the arrow is pointing in a different direction. 
So Funding Circle is a small business finance service. And in this instance, Sage Accounting can connect to it and send data into it as part of funding requests, which is a massive time saver. The two apps we've seen so far are pushing data into the accounting software, but with fund Funding Circle, we're, push we're pushing data out of it. Um, and things can get even more complicated. Um, we can actually add in a second layer of integration. So like Lightspeed can talk to Perkville and Deputy. Perkville is about customer loyalty. So it allows businesses to set, set up schemes like the Tesco club card points, but on a smaller scale. Um, and Deputy is a staff management system that controls rotas and timesheets. Um, and for some businesses, even this is a simple example of an app stack. It's easy to add many additional layers of apps. And just to remind you, um, we can swap out Sage for any other of the top accounting software like QuickBooks or Xero. It's all just about that app store and all of these accounting apps have amazing app stores. And apps like Auto Entry and Lightspeed always make sure they're on there. So we're going to have a, another poll. Um, Solana, if you wouldn't mind sharing that, that would be great. Um, so at this point, what do you think the value is in getting app stacks in place? Are you looking primarily at increasing your own efficiency or perhaps that of your practice? Or is this for you primarily around helping clients or is it a mixture of both? So vote now and then we'll come back to the results in just a minute. So um, how do you go about building an app stack? Um, well, as I mentioned, it's necessary to try and examine all client touch points. So we show the key ones here, um, but depending on how you do business, there may be others. So you can consider everything from new client acquisition through to onboarding, to getting data from clients, to creating reports and forecasts for the clients. All of these can be served by a high quality app stack, which automates the work and makes everything as easy as it can be. Um, but remember, this isn't technology for technology's sake. We're trying to automate and introduce efficiencies by implementing an app stack, and it must pay for itself in terms of time saved, or it just isn't worth it. Lana, can we see the results of the poll, please? Um, perfect. So it seems like most people are looking for efficiency to help them and also kind of a mixture of both as well. Um, so as you heard me discuss, um, consideration of clients in some fashion is ultimately central to building an app stack because it is pr about providing solutions for each client touch point. So um, let's see if we can build a good accountant's app stack based on that timeline of customer touch points. Um, believe it or not, Sage has been putting a lot of work into this and it's entirely possible to create a very reasonable tech stack which stretches all the way from proposal through to advisory service offerings once the client is onboarded. So we're going to start with Sage for Accountants. Um, this is a platform where you can build the perfect space to manage practice and client work. It includes an accounting, bookkeeping and payroll for accounted starter kit with the tools and support you need to get going. You can then add optional solutions to manage everything from client relationships to tax. And that's even before we've started building our tech stack. So um, the first thing on our timeline, it's successfully science. Um, now, you already know that clients are complex and continually need more from you, and legislation around client engagement is onerous. And Go Proposal solves all of this by giving you a sophisticated client engagement platform that removes all the bottlenecks, inconsistencies, and time traps associated with these processes. Um, you can charge what you're worth in a consistent way and avoid scope creep. Um, you can create professional proposals and renewals and automatically generate sophisticated engagement letters that evolve with regulatory changes. There's also an anti-money laundering or AML system that provides know your client and risk assessments that are tailored to your needs, guided by compliance experts, and that's fully integrated with the client onboarding process. 
And once the client is in the system, you'll need a way to get their accounting data quickly and easily. And that's where auto entry comes in. Um, it's the fastest way to capture, categorize, and publish financial documents through to account software. Um, so you can scan your receipts, bills, invoices, and um, things like credit card statements, and auto entry will extract the data for you, saving up to 90% of manual processing time normally associated with data entry. Um, you're then able to publish it straight through to your accounting software like Sage, Zero, or QuickBooks, or you can output it as an Excel file. Um, and you can also create basic expense reports using it as well. So now we've got the client data in the system um, and we can do our regular tasks such as compliance work, but this is just the start of it. With the move towards advisory service offerings, we can add future lead to our app stack to automate the creation of forecasting and reporting. Uh, we can quickly and easily provide clients with impactful insights for their businesses, current, past and future performance. Um, this would be like sales, expenses, profit, cash flow, tax and growth insights. Operations, staff, profit, trends, bills, sales, tax. It's all going to be predicted across the profit and loss, balance sheet and cash flow with up to three year forecasts. But we haven't finished yet. Um, lastly, we have Sage Earth and Sage Earth uses accounting data to build a business's carbon footprint, helping them reach net zero emissions in their operations and supply chain. It means businesses can comply with things like the greenhouse gas protocol and essentially manage their ESG requirements, but without having to employ expensive consultants. Now, these obviously aren't the only apps you can include in your app stack. So next, we're going to take a look at some other examples that accountants sometimes add in. And this time, don't worry, they're not going to be provided by Sage. Um, so this is all about managing your accounts receivable. So we all know that getting fees from clients is a pain. If you don't take care of it, then your cash flow suffers. But if you spend too much time chasing payments, then your work suffers. Um, and as you know, it's entirely possible to spend a lot of your time chasing payments. Um, and automation is key here. And there are a couple of ways to do that. The first is to make use of direct debit um, via services like GoCardless. Um, the key thing um, is that this offers direct debit without the need to go through your bank. I'm sure you'll know that if you've ever tried to do that, then it can be really hard unless you're a larger business. But Go Cardless basically makes it accessible to everybody. Um, and you can use them for one off payments as well. Um, and of course, there are payment processing platforms like Stripe that many of us already use, um, but these tend to focus more on collecting one off payments. Um, but you can often use them to add pay now links to invoices and so forth to automate payments. And the second suggestion is to use a service like Chaser, which automates chasing late payments. You just tell it when a payment is due, um, and then you choose from one of the template options for the content of the email or text message, and then Chaser does its thing. Um, in fact, Chaser offers a whole lot more, including a collection service for stubborn debts and even an outsourced credit control team. Um, the charges are pretty low. Um, for example, Go Cardless charges 1% of the fee plus 20p. Um, but if fees concern you, then just remember, rather than spending 15 to 20 minutes making a call chasing a late fee payer, you could be spending that time earning your hourly rate. It really does pay for itself and it significantly reduces stress. Um, next, we have measuring like car or mileage expenses. This is one for clients. Um, sorry guys, just having a bit of a technical issue here. Sorry guys, I had a bit of a tech issue there. Um, but... but yeah, so um, this is one for your clients and for yourself. 
Um, so if your work takes you on site, and um, this could be really helpful. Um, so most of us already use mobile phone apps while driving, such as Google Maps or Waze for navigation. Um, and apps like MyLiQ or Tripolog can automate mileage logging in a HMRC compatible way. So they calculate the cost and potentially send the data straight to your accounting software. So there's no more having to scribble down mileage logs, um, no more requirement to key that log data into your accounting software. Um, and the app is much more accurate and precise than any human is likely to be. So those like fractions of a mile here and there that we tend to round down really do add up over the space of a year. Um, and then we have like building an online presence. So the components of your app stack aren't necessarily all about managing the numbers. You can add in things like marketing tools too, to assist with new client acquisition or to encourage existing clients to stick with you for upselling opportunities. Um, essentially, you're looking for anything that can introduce efficiencies and again, reduce the time taken. With marketing tools, this is especially useful because these tools can also help with tasks that aren't necessarily in your wheelhouse, such as creating an online presence. So social media is an easy, cheap and often free way to market to your target client base. Um, plus, you can engage with existing clients socially without having to leave your house. Um, and most of us are already on social media 100 times a day anyway, so why not extend your business um, out to a social media page? So if you haven't already, consider creating a Facebook page, a LinkedIn company page, um, a Twitter handle specifically for your business. Um, now, you may be thinking that's going to be really time consuming to have to post all the time, but there are apps like Hootsuite or Social Bee, which can schedule social posts. So you just spend 15 minutes at the start of the week queuing up posts. And just remember, social media platforms reward people who drive engagement via frequent posts. So the more you post, the more likely you are to be noticed. So um, how do you introduce apps to clients? Um, so introducing apps and app stacks to clients is more difficult than it might first appear. Care needs to be taken because as a rule, most of us are Luddites. So you should focus on the selling points of a new app for clients. So focus on results and outcome rather than technology for technology's sake. Explain how it helps you help them in a better way. So it means that you're freed up to help in other ways. Um, explain how it helps them to be MTD compliant. So again, a digital journey is required for MTD and copying and pasting or handwritten accounting are not allowed. Technology is the only way forward and an app stack is an ideal way of ensuring that. Remember, you're the expert, but they aren't. So it may be overwhelming for them. You might be really excited and enthusiastic about some new app, but to them, it's just one more thing to make life difficult. So just focus on the pain points that you're solving for them. Quote examples, if you can, of how things have improved for yourself or for others. So now we're going to look at how auto entry fits within an app stack and the value it offers. So as I mentioned earlier, most apps and services that exist within app stacks are built around automation. And auto entry's focus is to help you get data from receipts, invoices, bills and statements, but without having to manually enter it by hand. It integrates seamlessly with all of the top accounting software to form one of the first and most valuable steps in your app stack. Um, in fact, using auto entry reduces data entry processes by up to 90% while increasing accuracy by up to 99%. So working from left to right, let's look at how auto entry works. So first we need the documents. These can be printed receipts or invoices. Um, for example, if you buy something in a shop, then you can grab the data from the receipt when you get to the car by using the auto entry app. Um, you can just snap a picture and then it uploads. Um, you can obviously scan it using a desktop scanner, but most people do use the, the app on their phone because they can just take a snapshot. Um, if you can take a selfie, then you can use the auto entry app to snapshot paperwork. You can also configure auto entry to grab bills from online sources. So lots of people use this to grab end of month bills from construction suppliers, for example, or those niggly like monthly bills that you don't really want to be logging into every month. 
Um, next, you just have to categorize the data and do quick tasks like assign the VAT codes. All of this data is pulled in from your accounting software, so you're not having to, to guess on the fly. Um, an auto entry will also learn your categorizations. So the next time you do it, it'll automatically suggest what to use. And this makes things even faster for you. Um, you can also create rules so that this step is entirely automated in the future. And once you're confident the categorizations are right, it means you're not going to really check those documents anymore. Next, and finally, you click to publish through to the accounting software, and that's it, job done. Um, it can easily take less than a minute once you're experienced using the app. Um, however, it is worth mentioning that you can output the data to an Excel spreadsheet or to a CSV file if that better fits in with your workflow. So um, now we are into the Q&A. Um, I know we did kind of finish up a bit earlier than um, we thought, but does leave more room for questions. So feel free to send any questions in if you do have any. Perfect. Thank you, Megan. If you wouldn't mind switching your camera on, we can see your lovely face and put those questions directly to you. Oh, was my camera never on? Apologies. That's okay. You, we focused on your voice and on, on the content, so that's no problem. We do have some questions coming in. I'm going to start with one about the difference between HubDoc and auto entry. Um, what would you say is the main differences there? Apparently, Xero also allows you to send bills and scan invoice data. So, what is the difference, would you say, between? No yeah, chance. so um, obviously, look, I'm on the auto entry team, so I do have to be biased. Um, but look, I deal with customers on a daily basis. Um, realistically, there's not a huge amount of difference between HubDoc and auto entry. They do a very similar thing. They're both automation softwares in terms of grabbing the data from your invoices. But from firsthand experience dealing with clients, they do tend to say that auto entry is a bit more accurate, especially for your bank and credit card statements specifically. And we have a conversion tool to convert those PDFs and people really do like that feature compared to HubDoc. But if you're experienced with HubDoc or Dext, um, auto entry would come really, really easy for you. Um, so best thing to do is to give it a try and see kind of um, if you prefer the look um, of auto entry. Perfect. I assume that's the same for Dext. It's just yeah. your own personal choice. What works for your for your practice and your your systems. Basically, Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Can auto entry match bills to purchase orders created in Zero? Uh, yes. So auto entry does have a purchase order matching with Zero. Um, you do have to create your purchase orders in a specific way in Xero, which we do a full article about. I don't have the process in front of me, but no, it 100% does. So when you view the invoice in auto entry, you can then choose the purchase order you want it to match with. And I assume any of our members who are watching today who have those specific queries about how to do something that you have customer service that they can get hold of to help yep. them train their teams, get used to using the system. Yeah, how my, to use team, it for themselves. my team specifically do onboardings with customers on a daily basis. So if you work better in kind of a one to one setting, we can set up a training session for you. No problem. We also host webinars once a week as well, which also goes through that information. And we do Q&A's. So, yeah, loads of options available for, for people if they want to see how it works firsthand. Perfect, Megan. We'll be sharing your contact details at the end so people can get hold of you. Does auto entry pick up multi line invoices and create multi line items? It does indeed. Um, so auto entry can pull all the lines from the invoice. Um, we I can go into pricing in more detail if people want that. If you do contact me, but auto entry is basically a credit based system. So if you are doing line item extraction, we do charge an extra credit for that, but it is 100% accurate. It pulls through each item description, unit price, that per item, all of that. So it's very accurate. Fantastic. Apparently HubDoc doesn't do that just for yourself, Megan. <laughs> Helen you know? is asking, does auto entry add the supply invoice to the Sage record? Yes. So the way you work is you would basically connect your auto entry to Sage, maps across all of your nominal codes, VAT codes, suppliers, all that good stuff. Once you categorize the invoice, you just publish it across and the invoice appears in Sage with all the data and a link back to the PDF in auto entry as well. Perfect. Got a few people asking about trying out the system. They've had some trouble using other systems. They'd like to get their heads around how it works. I know we're offering a free demo at the end and that people would be able to take up that opportunity to go and play with it and see if it suits their practices. 
hundred percent. Yeah. And again, hundred percent recommend booking yourself in for training. Um, some people think it's going to take a lot of time. It takes between 20 to 30 minutes to do a training session with you. And then you'll have our full support through the use of auto entry as well. So you can reach out to us with any questions you have as you're using it as well. Perfect. So is asking, most of our clients have customized cloud ERPs. Will the apps work in the same way for, cloud use, for clients using cloud ERP? Can you clarify that? Um, the way systems are customized, how easy is that to inter integrate? I really actually wouldn't be sure if I'm being honest. Um, I'm not entirely sure what cloud ERP stands for. I don't know if you would know that, Roz, to give me a bit more context. I don't, but I'm assuming for something as technical as that, you would also have advisors on hand who could talk that through and see if they can make it work for them. Yeah, so look, I can definitely um, take note of the question and I'm sure we would have your information that we could reach back out to you um, with kind of an answer afterwards. But as of right now, I, I wouldn't be able to kind of give you an answer, I'm afraid. Perfect. If auto entry doesn't import everything exactly right, can you edit that transaction yourself when you're checking? Yeah, you 100% can. I will say that auto entry is extremely accurate compared to other similar services, simply because um, we do extra checking before the invoice is released to you. So it should be accurate. Um, and if there are any um, problems, my advice would be before you change it yourself, reach out to our support team, because they, they can actually get into the dev team. So they don't make the mistake the next time the invoice comes through. And we're very flexible. But yes, everything is editable. Even when auto entry fills something in for you, that's always, always changeable. So nothing is locked in until you actually publish the invoice across. And is that entry instant upload? Or does it take a bit of time to come into the system? There is a bit of processing time, which is a bit if you're used to manual entry, it can be a bit to get used to. So when you upload the invoice to auto entry, the processing can be anything from 10 minutes to a couple of hours. But the beauty of it is you're not having to sit there for two hours manually typing everything in. You upload your invoices, which take a minute, go do something else, go take lunch, go for a coffee. Or what some people do is they'll upload at the very end of the day. So the next morning when they come into work, they're sitting there ready for them. So they're not kind of sitting waiting around. Perfect. Thank you. We have quite a few members who seem to be joining from the UAE. Is it, are they also able to use the system? Can they also get a demo of how to use that for themselves? I know we have auto entry across the UK. I um, in America. I actually wouldn't be sure about the UAE. And if it is available, it would be a different team that would kind of be looking after them because auto entry can be slightly different depending on the region. And um, so again, that could be one I could look into and get back to the person about. Thank you, Megan, that would be fantastic. Um, can auto entry extract line items on say a bill for stock items? And if so, can it extract the volume column for linking to a stock system like Deer or Unleashed? That was a long question. Would you like me to read that again to you, Megan? I, I think I, I get it. I, I actually think I have it in front of me, so I can just read, read back over it. So um, in terms of a bill, so I'm guessing it's like an invoice or a receipt or something like that. Auto entry can pull through the line items. It'll pull through the um, like the unit like the unit amount, the unit price of each item. And depending on your integration, you may be able to assign different nominal codes or department codes, project codes, all of that, that those codes depend on your integration. Um, but auto entry doesn't pull in stock per se, that would still be done within your accounting software. So if your accounting software is set to manage stock, as long as the line items are assigned to the correct nominal codes, as long as the categorizations are correct, once it's published through to, I'm just gonna use Sage as an example, Sage, that would then take care of the stock as it would usually do when you manually pop it in. Perfect. I think Svetlana is asking if auto entry can grasp those invoices from suppliers' emails and add them to Sage. Yeah, so um, with auto entry, there's multiple ways to upload invoices and we do have email functionality. So when you create a company in auto entry, it automatically generates an auto entry mailbox that you can use to email um, invoice across. So you could share that email with your clients and they can email it in directly. And then the invoice pops into auto entry as normal, categorize it, publish it to Sage. 
Um, and just to increase automation again, there I didn't mention it kind of in the PowerPoint, but there is an auto publish feature. So for those kind of recurring invoices, recurring bills, you can increase the automation even further by just clicking auto publish on. Remember the categorizations and it just goes through directly. You don't even have to kind of see that come through. Perfect. Another one saying, I have a big issue with clients getting data from credit card statements, which always seems to be on paper for some reason. Can auto entry handle these? Yeah, so a lot of people use auto entry for credit card statements because not a lot of credit card companies offer CSV downloads or bank feeds. So auto entry can 100% handle those. You would upload the PDF file to auto entry and it basically converts it into the Excel or CSV file type. So then you can be importing it into your accounting software. And just like with a bank feed, then all the payments and transactions come up and then you can match those with the invoices as you would do with a normal sort of bank reconciliation. Brilliant, thank you. So Megan, we get down to the question about pricing and costs. The trouble often with all of these apps is that they have monthly subscriptions and this all starts to add up for members. Yeah, so again, for me, I think it just goes back to time saved. Um, I've spoken, an accountant I spoke to before that I did training with, yeah, they, they were also talking about the cost of it, but for them, they mentioned that, I'm just going to use auto entry as the example. With auto entry, we have multiple subscriptions available for kind of any price point. We have lower subscriptions for lower kind of uploading companies and then higher subscriptions for like accountants. And what the accountant said to me was using auto entry has basically saved them a salary of somebody manually updating that data entry. So if you think about it that way in terms of what value is the the app providing to me and what time am I saving that I can then use to grow my business to then make more money that's sort of I suppose what you should sort of sort of consider is just is the money you're spending saving you time fantastic thank you so much Megan that brings us to the end of our session today um we would like to thank Megan and for all of you listening today for coming along. A short feedback survey is going to pop up at the end of this. If you wouldn't mind taking a minute just to feedback and let us know if this has been useful and to shape our future content. Also a reminder that we have a big tech conference happening live at the end of the year where you'll be able to come and meet all of our partners do those demos yourself if you're not going to go and do it immediately with auto entry after this and also get speech supplies about what will work for your practice. There's a QR code being shared now if you would like that free demo and if you'd like to talk to our partners a bit more. And other than that, fantastic. Have a nice day. Thank you again, Megan. Yeah, thank you so much for the time, everyone. I hope it was helpful. And like Roz said, you can just use that QR code there to get um, a free trial of auto entry and we can offer demos and everything that people need. Um, I'm also happy if you want to reach out to me directly with any questions. Um, so, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Have a good day.